Oh, babies. Oh, that would have sucked. No, that's about right. Right. We haven't done that in a while. Yeah, no, I, I had it. I had it lined up. Those were those were the those, those were the days. The, those were the rough days. Yeah. Those were the yeah. Those were the early days. <laughs> that's why we. That's what you the whole. That? Thank you, no. Irene. Yeah. That was, those were the rough ones. Thank you, Irene. Um, yeah, the Brady the Brady Boner Hour. We'll never we'll never be able to get that one back. No. We have to record that twice, right? Yeah, the second one sucked. But that yeah, wasn't because I, I forgot to hit record. The audio just stunk for some reason. I think oh, I the audio stunk. I, I think our NHL draft didn't record. There was uh, oh no, our NHL draft recorded. Yeah, the you first just one, the first one didn't. Oh yeah, you did leave. You got no, pissed. you you kicked me out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because you wouldn't no. you, you wouldn't agree that who was who was it? It was a right, right winger. You wanted a right wing. <laughs> yeah, and he played left, and you're like, yeah, no, then fuck he got that. then he got Gordy Howe <laughs> and Ray Bork. <laughs> Perfect, Gordy Howe. Yeah, no, good team, good team, yeah, great team. Wayne Gretzky uh, had... goal record by less uh, nine hundred games. <laughs> Think about how insane that is. Gordy Howe is the number one goal scorer in NHL all. history, and yeah, Wayne Gretzky was... beat his record by nine hundred games. He played till like he was ninety. That's why he's on your team. You're still active. He played with both his sons. It's so weird. Yeah, that's awkward. Um, I just want to tell you that I just I peed and. and I'm having some good um, movements. Like that was a good pee. You know when you got a good pee, it's like a good stream. Yeah. Do you guys want to talk about um, uh, some uh, overrated, underachieving Boston sports teams? Yeah, I'm glad I had to have to do any research. Thank you for doing all that for us. Appreciate it. Bill. Yeah, I can't wait. Oh no, I was just I was looking for a. Uh... Thank you, like Ray, but that's fine. We can go. We can go on without it. Uh, so this is the uh, some uh, read the emails. Bill doesn't say thank you either. <laughs> I mean, that's two over oh two right there. No, I thank Rich all the time. We shake hands in your mom's vagina. That's thanks enough. So this uh, some of my social hour is going to be uh, the most underachieving cores in recent Boston sports history. A couple key words for you, uh, Bill. Not reading the email. Uh, so cores. Oh, I read know. this one. Okay. I have a big, big gripe with your Red Sox take in recent Boston uh, history. So not dating past like the nineties, like in our lifetime, and not in one of your lifetimes, Bill. Like it's from the nineties. Okay, so we're not talking sixties Red Sox, eighties Red Sox. Um, that's that's what we're gonna be. Any, anyone want to get any opening takes off their chest before we get into this into this show? Any uh, final words? Patriots are borderline dead to me. Carry on. That's an active take. We're going to dip back into the time machine here for the show. Welcome to the Simple Minds Social Hour. Most underachieving cores in recent Boston sports history. This show is always brought to you by White Birch Brewing, the best craft brewing in New Hampshire, not underachieving one bit. They're down in Nashville, New Hampshire. Ray, address, please. 460 Amherst Street. You can even see they're overachieving. Get on down there, get yourself a flight, get yourself a pint, get yourself the Dr. Vittles flight of pints. Uh, whatever you do, um, if you can't get it there, then get your local beer store. Uh, whatever you do, tell them the Simple Minds boys sent you White Birch Brewing. Uh, so we're going to go the four major sports here. Bruins, you son of a bitch. Red Sox. Um, you don't want to do the. You don't want to do the revolution. Losers of four MLS. Oh five, oh six, oh seven. Losers Taylor of Wellman led of four MSL cups, including losing in the first round of the playoffs after being the number one seed last year and setting them an MLS record for wins. It probably belong at the top of the list, but I don't know enough, nor do I give a shit enough to talk about it. So maybe we'll have uh, Billy on the pitch, who apparently has all the details. Apparently, yeah. Maybe we'll get a closet a, MLS fan over there. But maybe we'll get Wallace, Ray Soccer I love that ginger at the end of the show. Uh, but for now, <laughs> we're going to stick with the Bruins, Red Sox, Patriots, and Celtics. 
And uh, we can rank him at the end. The obvious one loves numbers and uh, lists, likes and to put them in his ledger. So no order here. Let me just start with what I gave you. Uh, let's start with, I labeled it as Bergeron's Bruins. So put the timeline wherever you want. But Krejci, Chara, Bergeron. If you want to throw Marshan and Tuca on the list, go for it. But it's a, let's call it a decade. Um, let's call More it. Than that, 2009. Yeah. To, so, okay. Well, let's do don't parse numbers with me there. Uh, hey, there Billy, Rayman. don't it's fuck numbers up with Billy Rayman. They won in 2011. Uh, they were Krejci and Bergeron and Cheryl here were, in, you know, that 08, 07, 08, 09, 09. So whatever, 13 years, fine, whatever you want to call it. That era, that's what we're talking about. Tennis years, three trips to the finals, one Stanley Cup. Those guys, those guys needed more than one cup. Bergeron needs more than one cup. Blame to Garask. <laughs> I knew it was Blame all going to come back to that. Two, two thousand two thousand thirteen, two two goals in twenty six seconds to lose Stanley Cup in Game Six at home against the Chicago Blackhawks. First one, I won't throw it on you, but that second one, when you're taking a fucking temper tantrum that you just gave up the tying goal to let Chicago come back, two Garask. That was Game seven. Six. That wasn't winning it. That was Game Six, though. It doesn't matter. You win that game, you're going to Game Seven in Chicago. I'm throwing it on two grass after you just won the Vesner in a, in a strike shortened year. Two, let's flash fast forward. 2019, Game Seven, two goals, four shots. It's two grass fault. They never won a fucking Stanley Cup since 2011. Squarely on his shoulders, two fucking Rask. And this year, if they win a Stanley Cup, it would be because Tuka Rask fucking rode off into the turd sunset with his pool boy wife and everything else. Ugh. Two grass fall, Bergeron, Marshawn. None of these guys want to have more, more cups. Two grass. First of all, they're never winning the cup this year. Second of all, that those those two instances may be true, but the uh the Maybe. scope of they're hundred percent the true. scope of history won't remember it as that. The scope of history will man remember Patrice Bergeron being considered one of the best two-way forward of his generation and only getting one cup. That's an underachievement. I don't care who, I don't care what you want to say about it. Charles Barkley never won a championship underachievement. Let's go look at his shitty teammates. Allen Iverson never won underachievement. Let's look at his shitty teammates. It's going to be considered an underachievement because of the greatness that you were, that uh, people thought you were, you know, as great of a player people thought you were. And, um, and you didn't, you didn't come through. And Tukarask, yeah, in those instances, certainly shit the bed. Probably literally. It was probably poo poo in his pants. But there are plenty of instances where those, it, it, in recent years, in 2019 specifically, where those top lines kind of disappeared at certain times too. Where were they in game seven? Those guys didn't score. They were hitting the fuck. They were it's hitting, hard to, uh, uh, never mind. They were dumping <laughs> pucks in the chest of what, whatever the fucking uh, Bennington. Blues goalie there. Bennington. They're, they put a thousand shots on goals. All of them were in his pads. They were tight. They were tight as shit. He had a better save percentage than Irene on a Tuesday. Was Which is zero, hurt by the way. She doesn't Black stop anybody. It, it all goes in. It all uh, goes in. Wasn't Bergeron hurt in that Blackhawk series? Well, he probably wouldn't have played game seven. He had a punctured lung, a broken Yeah, a broken that's what rib. I thought it was, yeah. But he still he got it out. It played. wasn't his don't, fault. Don't disparage his name. He would have played. He was in the hospital the next night, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah. he would have. He would have. He played. couldn't breathe. I would have played. He would have played. Char Keep played with a broken Dude. jaw. That didn't help him. No. No. <laughs> that didn't help. Basketball, you don't agree though. You don't. So, but you don't call the Bruins the Bergeron Bruins. No, I do. I, I think they underachieved. I mean, and there were some pretty dismal years in there. I think there was, you know, if you if you really want to look at some rosters after that. St- I mean, basically 2013, 2019. You know, you, you added Jerome McGinley after 13. That was probably your best chance. You missed the playoffs a bunch of years. That was more, I think, coaching and and your GM. And Chirelli and, and Claude Julian combo. But yeah, they're definitely underachieving. I mean, you're looking at right now, you had two Hall of Famers for a long time. You had three Vesna Trophy winners from 2009 to 2019 or 2022 in this core. Thomas won two and um, two girl won one. I mean, you know, you had one of your best, the best, fuck, one of the best defensemen in your gener- in our generation, a, a first ballot Hall of Famer. And yeah, you, of course, you should have won more. Goldton had a big, 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 Thing to do with that later on after uh, after thomas kind of left i mean it's it sucks he hit lightning in a bottle of thomas in his 30s and, and, and instead of his 20s i mean he played in europe for a long time and you kind of got lucky michael connell signed him off the scrap heap in europe and he you know 
he was awesome. I don't think he would have been great now, but it would have been a nice to get a better, better stretch run on him, but underachieving for sure. For sure. Would you rather be the Bruins in their 10 to 15 years of pretty constant um, success getting to the finals three times? How many president's trophies did they win? Two or three? Um, and always kind of being in the conversation. Or would you rather be the Blackhawks? And- Blackhawks. I've always said it. Give me the Blackhawks. They the way they drafted. I mean, they they surrounded. Yeah, but they've Pace. sucked now for years. Championships matter. Championships matter. The last time they won a 2015, right? So I mean, you still. I give me that. Give me. Give me that. The, give me that dynasty. You won three titles in eight years, nine years. Yeah. basically with, with the Blackhawks. Give me that. I mean, you, the way they built their team with Taze, um, Patrick Kane, Brent Seabrook, Duncan Keith, all those guys. And they surrounded them with, with cheap talent and good draft picks. And you know, the Bruins have lacked that. Give me, give me what I would take a rebuild. I would take a fucking rebuild because you just won. You sold out to win three championships and that's what the Bruins should have done. And they did not do enough to sell out to win these three championships. You had every opportunity and you basically could have won. You could have beat the Blackhawks. Yeah. But you to your point, the Blackhawks went to three. They won three. The Bruins went to three. They won one. Like they got there. They got there and it was poopoo pants that lost them the lost in the game. So they didn't necessarily build it wrong. And they didn't necessarily, I think I, I go the other way. I think I'd rather have 15 years of constantly being on the door, rather, doorstep. The like, doorstep. Think about if a couple of bounced, bounced the exits. other way. Thinking about the other you way, you can go then, back like, to 2011. You can go back to game seven against fucking Montreal. Nathan Horton got lucky. He, he, it was a deflection calls a goal. I mean, Tampa Bay fucking Tim Thomas in game seven makes a goddamn stick safe on a wide open net. I mean, it, you could say that even in their championship year, the year before that, they blew a three nothing lead to Philly in the second round, right? So, I mean, you could, there's it. W- guess who was in that on that? Guess who was in that on that? I'm gonna go to Garrasque. Was it to Garrasque? Yeah, he was that goal. He took the best. He took the, the starting. I mean, just yeah. I just I don't know. I it's like that's that's the question. Do you want to be you want to be the Pittsburgh Steelers or do you want to be the Cowboys? You want to win three Super Bowls in five years or do you want to be you win two Super Bowls in twenty years but always be there, like always be on the doorstep? As a fan, it's like if your team just fucking sucks. You're it, there. You're not paying it. I mean, you'll pay attention, but you're not truly, truly invested. Like Blackhawks fans right now are just kind of seeing if Patrick Kane's going to get dealt so they can rebuild and just kind of going through the motions. Where Bruins, we're every we're disappointed all fucking time, but at least there's something to get disappointed about. So I don't know. I see it both ways, but I think I would rather have the Do you make good points success because of the way the Bruins built their roster as far as re-signing their guys to below market deals where Chicago signed Duncan Keith and that to a, I think he was averaging 8 million a year. And I believe they signed Taze and Kane to 10, 10 million. Yeah. They're both over each. 10, like 10, five, 10, seven. Yeah. So, I mean, that there's a problem there. I mean, that's the problem building your roster post your championships where the Bruins have only had that one, but they got, they did a better job of building uh, with the extensions, hometown discounts, even Pasnak signing his bridge deal, Bergeron, yeah. Marshawn, all those guys. So, yeah. Well, either way, uh, confirmed a uh, an underachievement of Bergeron's uh, Bruins. Let's move on to the Celtics, and specifically, this is a sh- much shorter time period, but I still think they underachieved. And this, I got this. I I came up. I thought of this watching the KG ceremony when they retired his number, which originally I thought was bullshit because he was only here for six years. But after watching it, that was kind of cool. And they love KG. They haven't had that in a long time. Chapter one. 20 plus years since that type of atmosphere. He earned it. I think he earned it. After watching, I think he earned it. But that team, KG, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, three uh, first ballot Hall of Famers, we're together five years. KG was with the Celtics for six years. Obviously, Pierce was with them a lot longer. But that core, called five, six years, one championship. Two finals trips, one championship. One derailed season 2009 by a KG injury uh, and a game seven um, loss in 2010. Uh, Perk goes down, and they lose that series to the Lakers. If they win that series in the Lakers, immense We're not having this success. conversation. Yeah. Immense, immense. Unbe- the The – 
the difference between losing game seven and winning game seven is you underachieved in your time in Boston versus you are, you know, considered highly, 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 highly successful. And, you know, one of the great, it's hard to say you're underachieved though, when you ran into a good Lakers team with Kobe Bryant in his prime. Right. So, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing I, I you know, you should have won, but you got them at the kind of tail end of their primes and in, in the three, you know, I just, well, they but they just beat well, hold Kobe on Bryant two years before I'm, and they were the best team in the league from the, know, day, listen, from the me, day they got together. The problem with them being considered like underachievers is your time frame. Six years, went to two title, two championships. They won one out of the two. They went to, you know, Eastern Conference Finals where they ex- they extended a little bit longer than they should have going with Miami. You know, they, they were at Miami on the ropes. They were up 3-2, and then LeBron James took off, right? I mean, LeBron James showed he was the best player in the world, went to the finals. I mean, they had their role. I mean, two years They're the role, reason right? why LeBron went to Miami. They kept destroying the Cleveland Cavaliers, making LeBron getting early exits in the playoffs and made him form the big three because he couldn't get past the Celtics. If that I big had, three. Yeah, and if I had, like, you know, putting him on a list, I put the Celtics pretty low on the list of underachieving with that core as much as we wanted uh, more, you know, more titles. But I think the small window of just that six year window, you know, Ray Allen only played the five. You had the one more year that which you went, you had a better team that six year before they all, you know, or the fifth year, whatever it was. Yeah. Six years. The, the last year, Terry, well, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Then you lost the Knicks in six games, you know, in the playoffs. But I think before that it's hard, it's hard to say, they would be lower on my list just because of the, the short time frame. If they were, I longer, agree with you. I maybe it's just about the way that they're celebrated that irks me a little bit. It's like one you, title. You won one. You know, you're the Celtics. Bird won three. They were the greatest team for ten years, and then there anyone the can win for, one. It's that second. Like, you know what I mean? That's what I mean. Hard but to- and but I think that they had the talent and the team to win two, and they did Especially, it. So it's that's an why. That's why, yeah, exactly. They they should have won multiple. They should have been that dynasty. They should have won three in a row because they were that good. For if injuries didn't catch up with them, with Perk going down, with KG going down, they should have been that team to be the three peat in the NBA. And I think that's why Rich puts them on the list. I mean, if you I put them on the list, have to put them on the list. Oh nine, oh nine. They'd be know, lower, KG goes right. down. You lose the Bulls. Tough series. Tough injury. Magic. Magic. They beat the Bulls. Um, that. Remember Rondo in that Bulls series? He was yeah. He averaged, a, tri- he averaged a triple Bulls. double. Him and um, what was it? Uh, D Rose back and yeah. forth. And he's then he's uh, like, who's, he like forty five? Who's the other guy? Twelve one night. Ben Gordon. Ben yes. Gordon was a ben monster Gordon in that series. Stuff. Wasn't Luau Dang like a big one too in that series? Yeah, they, yeah, dude, yeah. that was that, that was a D Rose. D Rose. Went D Rose. Didn't he win the, the MVP after? that year? He won the mm-hmm. MVP that year in 09, didn't he? Yeah, because he got hurt the next year. Yeah, hurt the next year. Wasn't the same. Um, but yeah, the Celtics were the best team running, um, that year. They were better than the 08 team. And then 2010, you go to game seven and you had it. And then meta fucking world peace hits a three and, out of nowhere and you fall apart. And it's uh, tough when you're up 12 entering the fourth quarter. Yeah. The, you can't the look at the over. whole, you can't look at like that. No, I mean, they should have had two. They should have had two and they, and they let it slip. So you know, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. But I agree with they, you. It's lower they, on the list. They would be lower on my list of underachievers. Yep. All right, let's get to a uh, uh, maybe one that's a little bit higher. This was going to be interesting too, but I think if I think it qualifies, and this one's going to be harder to define. But it's Tom Brady's middle career. So um, let's call it after 06, You have Moss, Welker, Brady, the undefeated season. Can't really count away because Brady goes down, but then from then on to. You, know, you, you win put 14. it in the middle of the championships. So 2004, when you won your third until you won, your I just fourth. don't know how to define the it. core. So it's Brady Welker. If you want to Ten throw years. Moss in there, it's only core. there for a year, but you know, that Brady Welker offense. And then you can just put Brady, really Brady, Mayo Brady on defense, but middle team, middle year, yeah, Brady's middle career, right? You would, how, do you consider that an underachievement? Obviously you go to two Super Bowls, you lose them. You have a 2010 Perfect season, disgusting Ugh. loss uh, to the jets. You had uh, 06. A couple of Baltimore teams come in here, be you. But obviously, 07 stands out as the the <laughs> the crime, uh, the uh, the gem of the underachieving there, losing the Giants in the Super Bowl. So that that middle Brady career underachievement. Yeah, you left. You left at least three, maybe four Super Bowls on the table in that ten year period. I mean, starting 
throw it 05, right? So I'll go 2004 when they won their third to 2014. 05, you lost to the Broncos. You didn't have the team. 06, you're up 18 points at halftime against the Colts and lost that game when you would have steamrolled Chicago, who you already beat that year. 2007, you went undefeated and lost in the championship. Great, obviously 18. So I think 08, 09, 2010, you probably could have won a championship against Green Bay. I mean, against Green Bay, you, you, you shit to get shit to bet against fucking uh, the Jets. 2011, Giants again, couldn't stop a nosebleed, right? So West I mean, can't that, catch a ball. West West can't catch a ball. 2012 AFC Championship game again at home against Baltimore. Should have beat them. I know Baltimore won the won the, the Super Bowl that year, but at home you're a better team. I know maybe not on paper, but you were a better team that year. You beat you San beat Francisco. Them. Yep. I don't know. They had a good team. 50 50 because they were also up 34 to three against you on a fucking Sunday night game. You came all the way back just for Randy Moss to catch a 50 yard touchdown to win the game. But, anyways, 2013, you didn't really have a chance. I remember that shit. Yeah, I was at that game. That's why I remember it. It was 34 to three. And, Ray, you'll know this. Greg wanted to leave. I, I was like, let's get out of here at halftime. Surprise, surprise. Hold on, hold on. I said, let's get out of here at halftime. It was 34 to three. He goes, next score. If the Patriots score here, we're not leaving. And they came all the way back just for Randy Moss to catch a fucking 50 yard touchdown. But, anyways, but that, dude, you left four Super Bowls on there. You're, you're, you know, I put the, the fucking that 10 year stretch over what the Bruins 10 year stretch with Bergeron going to three. I mean, that's where I, I, the Patriots stretch right now with Tom Brady. I, I don't want to say you wasted 10 years, but, yeah. You had your shot, and you left a lot of Super Bowls out there. Raymond? No, I totally agree. I mean, the 07 season alone, just going undefeated, having all that momentum, breaking all these records, and then just losing to a Giants team who was a wild card that year. And just, you know, that's that was defeated itself. I mean, that's the biggest underachieving right there. But like Bill said, you had four Super Bowls. You could have, Brady could have 11 Super Bowls right now, the way that – that, uh, Peyton Manning's mom. You would have 11, according to them. Oh, because yes, because I get it now. Yes, yes. Because Eli stopped them and then Peyton did too. But yeah, I mean, just one of those things. I mean, Brady, it's just weird. The beginning of his career, he was great. Uh, the end of his career, he's still dominating. But that middle section, he just has so many holes that he just lost. Like, And he had the players, he had the talent around him. And the deep, you know, it's just one of those things where I feel like this is the biggest underachieving Boston sports uh franchise right here i think you have to pick years out of that 10-year stretch so that they were underachieving i think that 06 roster wasn't great you had zero wide receiver help and that's why you spent with wes welker dante Salworth, and uh, randy moss that year i mean i think the 2010 so if you went 06 07 2010 you know i think those are the you know yeah, the three call it real, error, real but, uh, by the way i don't put brady at the top of that underachieving list hell no he's not his the worst year was lost. Oh, oh, his six. worst year two, was 2009 and 2013 cuz that's why they drafted jimmy was after that 2013 year which was his worst year in a I'll, long i'll also tell you this if they if they scooped up those even half of those super bowls if they got if they won in 06 and 07 call it which probably are the two most realistic that they should have won um, you don't get the back end. You don't get the back end of Brady. You don't get three, no, he three rides out five. The sunset with Giselle. They they loaded up again because they hadn't won in ten years, and then they and then they caught the ro- they caught the wave in 2014 against Seattle, and you know they got a good team. But if if they had um, accomplished what they accomplished in the first ten year window instead of the first four year window, right? Then things would have been completely different. Brady's probably not here. Brady probably doesn't spend 20 years in New England, honestly. He probably I think moves he, on. he leaves if they won. We'll say that he won seven in until 2014. You're not getting the last two. No. I think he would have probably left that then. He would have tried to explore going to San Francisco, who was not a great team at that point. With you know, Kaepernick was still Ka- Kaepernick wasn't even there at that point, right? Or whatever it was he was not great at that point they could explore there oh, yeah, he had his he options had left or whatever Who came, whoever came in after Kaepernick no he left in 2016 because he was there that he went to the Super Bowl in 2012 yeah 2012 yeah which is um, anyway year. yeah I mean this the resurgence of the Patriots in the back end the back dynasty if you want to call it was uh, in large part due to their lack of Super Bowl wins in that 10-year window in between which still is an underachievement they definitely underachieved we just 
marked it all out there, had four chances at a Super Bowl, which they blew. And they drafted well from 2010 to 2014. Is I mean, you look at the guys that hit Gronk, Hernandez, you know, Devin McCourty, uh, Chandler Dante Jones. Had- Chandler Jones, Dante Hightower, Trey Flowers, you know, the, the you know, Trey Flowers came later, but I mean, from 2010 to 2014, they nailed on Logan Ryan. They nailed on, I mean, they hit yeah. on a lot, a lot of Logan Mankins. Logan, well, he came in no. 05. He came in. He came Count. after the Super Bowls. Counts. Um, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's up there. That's a big one. There's a lot of left. Certainly, when you compare that to the Celtics and what was left on the table, Patriots left a lot more on the table. That's more They've left your- more championships on the table than the Bruins and whatever the Celtics and yep, their stretches. For sure. Okay, let's get to the Red Sox and the uh, forever underachievers until 04. Um, so I'm going to go with this was a little bit difficult, Bill. I know you disagree with the way I labeled this here, and I'll interested just because you labeled nomar as the best shortstop in the game at that time but there was a rod and not Derek jeter so i disagree with that but 99 nomar was the best shortstop in the game he was also on steroids give me give me whatever everyone's give me me jeter titles matter everyone was on steroids um so that's the era we're talking about the late 90s early 2000s the the players i named were nomar who was there for the whole thing mo vaughn remember him he was there at the beginning Pedro was there at the end of that little run or middle to the end of that, that run. Um, there are pretty consistently always top five in payroll. Um, they came in second eight years straight from 98 to 2005. The Yankees owned that ass. As Bill said, I put Nomar as the best player in the game, which is hyperbole in baseball. It's hard to tell that, but 99 he was considered the best player in the game and he was in that conversation for that era. Pedro was undoubtedly the best pitcher in the game from that 98 to whatever you want, wherever you want to put it at 2000, 2001 stretch. And they didn't, not that they did not make world series. They didn't sniff a world series bill until Oh three, where they got their balls ripped out by Aaron Boone. Mo Vaughn was, Mo the, Vaughn was uh, long gone at that point, but that late nineties team was just a constant, constant, disappointing classic red stocks story. They just consistently fell up, fell short. So they're, the, the, they're lower on my list. They're probably the bottom of my list. And I'll tell you why is because the Yankees dynasty was coincided with their, their little run. I mean, they, they sniffed a little bit of a world series in 99. They went to the, you know, ALCS lost the Yankees four to one in that series. But I mean, they were right there. Here's, that, here's the sniff. Not much, not much. No. Sniff. no, but I mean, if Got you do fucking spanked, if you do, if you want to do like a 10 year window from 97 to 2007, they won two world series. That's 10 year window where it coincided with Roger Clemens leaving Pedro coming and then Mo Vaughn shooting out of here. They won two two World Series in that ten year stretch. Yeah, oh, but you can't put that. Uh, look, we didn't put the Celtics in a ten year stretch. We put the Celtics in when the players showed up, five or six years. So yeah. in two thousand and four, Theo shows up and uh, he brings in Terry. He t- brings in Francona, and the whole thing flips on its head. He brings in Kurt Schilling, and the whole thing flips. I didn't. I'm not talking about the Kurt Schilling era Red Sox that won two World Series. I'm talking about Pedro and Nomar, who were there for. S- five, six years, where, wherever you want to draw the line. And uh, they got spanked in the ALCS and really didn't come close after that. They should have been better. They should have been better than what they, they should were. have. But I mean, you saw the Indians there. You saw the Mariners were, were kind of the Yankees were in their fucking dynasty of those years. They were about? because they're better teams. I don't, the Red Sox are last on my list for underachievings in those years. You finish, I get it. You finished second, second, eight years in a row, but the Yankees were winning fucking five world series. Not only second, but they finished second in like with 82 wins. Like they were, grossly underachieving you they had a top five payroll and really good players and were not good enough they just weren't good enough they couldn't get over the hump of the yankees it wasn't just the yankees that was my point they weren't winning enough games they weren't doing enough that they were uh, they were getting paid at the top of the league with some of the best players in the league and they were getting 82 wins or 90 wins and not not reaching their potential, I, whether I whether it's Seattle or wherever, whatever team you want to put in place of them, who cares? I don't think they were underachieving. I just don't think the teams are that good. That's I, if you want to call it a not good team underachieving, I don't think they were that good. 
I mean, there were some bad players on that team. You really didn't after the 99. I mean, dude, look at the 99. You have fucking Brett Saberhagen in that fucking rotation. Later on, you had Derek Col- uh, fucking David Cohn. All these guys that you, you were you were looking at stop guys. You didn't the teams weren't that good. They weren't that good to be considered underachieving. But It'd what thing- Rich is saying is that they were top payroll. They're top because you're a top payroll doesn't mean you're it just that means you're shitty at spending. Right. So, I mean, just it's all a team, though, Bill, like, I don't understand why you're defending them. So then you're not defending them. I just don't think they were as underachieving as you're making them out to be when you're in the heart of a dynasty who's in your division. Of course, you're going to finish second place. The Yankees were fucking unheard of those years. Unheard of. They were so fucking good. It's hard to be fucking underachieving when you're again. it's It's hard. It's hard when you're in the midst of a dynasty with the Jeter Pettit. Posada dynasty that they had. It's hard to consider that before being Peyton Manning went to Denver. Was he an underachiever? Yes. No, he, had a, he, had a he had one Bowl. World Series. He had one. He had one Super he was, Bowl. He, Super he was Bowl. considered the greatest. He was considered the best quarterback in the league. He had one Super Bowl. He was an underachiever. Everyone, we all called him an underachiever. Mm-hmm. And he ran up against the Patriots dynasty. But he was still. I don't think the Red Sox were that good. There would be if. If we had to rank the four teams that we just mentioned, the Red Sox are dead last on my list. What about the Rebs? Are we still waiting for that? Go ahead, Shut Ray. Up. Go ahead, Ray. To that, no, I'm just saying. I mean, we always laugh at Buffalo Bills. I mean, the New England Revolution had the best one of their best players, Taylor Twelman, who was on losing teams going to the MLS Cup Finals for three years in a row. I mean, that's pretty underachieving right there. You can't win the big one. Wasn't it four? Uh, they went to 2013 and lost, so. Wasn't four years in a row, so that's why I'm just throwing that out there. But I'm just looking cool. at the '99 Red Sox. Uh, Chora, Larry, John Valentin. Eh, fucking that team's not as good as they got lucky against the Indians because fucking Pedro came back and threw a no no hitter over six innings to win that. But they were Brett Sabringer crushed, crushed. To start that game over three innings. Was 99 when A Rod went to Texas? I think it was 2000. 2000. Was it 2000? 2000. 2000, 2000 I was just he only uh, played three years there. He only played. I was looking at the years. payroll and the 99 team payroll. Yankees were one, then Texas out of nowhere is number two. So I thought that was the year that he won. Uh, well, the 98, the, your 98 team, you've got Movan, Nomar, John Valentin. That's enough to carry a lineup. You still got you got Veritek, a young Veritek. You got Pedro on the in there. Didn't, Avery have, a, didn't Steve stars. Avery have a good year that year? God no. Steve Avery was trash for the Red Sox, I'm pretty sure. He was a after he left the Braves, he wasn't great. I just I don't um I remember them being try they, I remember them constantly disappointing. Constantly disappointing, which is underachieving to me. You should you just should have won more, and they didn't. And I don't put I put them. I would put the revs above the Red Sox if we were ranking them right now. Fine, and that's not me defending them. I just don't think the teams were there. I don't think the teams were were competitive in the AL. Around those times, I mean, you saw the Griffey and A Rod Mariners still won what 116 games, what 2000. The Oakland A's <laughs> were kind of coming up too. I mean, I, yeah, but you had one of the best team teams. players in baseball with Nomar. I mean, Nomar was in the MVP competition. 2002, Jason Veritek, Tony Clark, Nomar, Shea Hillenbrand, Manny Ramirez, Johnny Damon, Trot Nixon. It's a good team, Bill. 2002. What's the rotation? When was uh, what was the one, two, three? Uh, pitching rotation there. That was the year they fired fucking Jimmy Williams at Joe Kerrigan as manager. Come on, come on. Oh, so come now on. we're now we're now it's the manager that is a uh, not. No, you're. I just think you're you're making them try to be a bigger underachiever than they were. They weren't. They should have been better. Yeah, they should have been better. Where'd they finish? O two. Last. <laughs> That's not under. No, they were uh, ninety three and sixty nine. Finished nice. second in the AL East. 93 and 69. Nice. 93 wins. If the Red Sox this year win 93 games, we're going to be fucking cheering them. 
Well, that's what you think because you're always low on them. I'm trying to finish where they, see where they finish. I know it's very weird that he's very low on them all the time, but yeah. But now he's defending the yeah, shitbag def- fucking really losers. Yeah. Let's go rank him so I can go eat dinner. How the fuck haven't you eaten dinner yet? Yeah, what is wrong I with did, you? I didn't have time before we started this. All right, um, Ray. Yes, sir. Have you been marking in the? Uh, yes, sir. Ledger. Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. How do you want to rank it? Well, so basically we had Bergeron's Bruins. They left two cups on the table. The Celtics Big Three left one finals on the table or championship on the table. Uh, Patriots Brady, middle of his career, four Super Bowls on the table. And no Mars Red Sox, they won zero World Series. Okay, so uh, Bill wants to put the Red Sox fifth. We're going to throw the Raves on here? The Revs? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Taylor Twelman's Revs. Taylor Twelman Revs. Three in a row. Um, Who's worse? The Red Sox or the Revs? So this I is... Mean, the if the Revs, Revs are, the are worse, worse Revs. they're fourth. Revs. The Revs. So the Red Sox are fifth. The Red Sox are the fifth. They're the least underachieving. They just sucked. Actually, yeah. I, I'm going to... I would put the Celtics above the Red Sox, and then I would slide the Revs above the Celtics. No, the Celtics are bigger achievers than the Red Sox. You talked me yeah. into it. They, get, they lost game seven to Meta World Peace. No, that's what I'm saying. I would go Red Sox fifth, Celtics fourth, Revs I see. third. I see. That's oh, what I'm saying. Sorry. I, 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 mis- I misunderstood you as I well. I did too. I thought, so I thought the Celtics, you're way. going four. I would put Celtics fourth. And then the Rebs at number three. I got you. I got you, baby girl. Okay. So then it's down to Bergeron's Bruins and Brady's. Red Sox missed the playoffs in 02, by the way. Just saying. And it's because they went through a managerial change. And her chief should have made it. <laughs> should have made it. Things aren't good. But anyways, go ahead. 93 wins. Pretty good. Uh, number two, Bill. Not, enough, you... not a good enough to make the playoffs as a wild card. So, exactly. anyways, should have gotten Bruins. Four. Bruins would be number two. Yeah, and then I, I say Brady's underachieving for the middle Brady's, of career. Brady's yeah. ten year stretch. Yeah, I agree. I'd go Bruins number one, but you guys win. No way, undefeated season on the table and all that. That can't be overlooked. No. That cannot be overlooked. Yeah, but Brady has seven. Six with the Patriots total. The yeah, but they're yeah, in that middle of his career. The middle he could of have career fucking is zero twelve. Two. He could have twelve right career. now. No, he could, he could have twelve. Oh, I would that. still go. I would still uh, as a as a player as a team. If you look at the Patriots in a in their run, they're no one's going to call them underachieving. They won way more. No, but if we're know, taking a section of his career. That is underachieving because he didn't win a championship and he had an undefeated season. I know what you're saying, but I can't. It's hard for me to parse that. Just the, I mean, it's hard well, for me to parse the fucking Red, Red Sox. Red Sox being you did that with the Red Sox when they were going up against a dynasty. But go ahead. In their same division, but you know, who's counting? Well, I the Red Sox. Bill, you, but he's right. You can push that out. Oh eight, Red Sox underachieve. Oh, oh you want to go? You want to? You want to? No, no, because you, we have no. You have no Mar. You have oh, no wait? Mar in. How do you oh, underachieve when you lost? You lose in Game Seven in the fucking ALCS. You didn't underachieve. Celtics lost in Game Seven. You, you were traded, better. You were the better you team. Traded your best hitter that year. You weren't the better team. That's the problem. You traded Manny Ramirez. This guy mid season for huh? Jason He's Bay. So sensitive for Jason Bay in two thousand. So sensitive about the Red Sox. Should have won. You blew a game seven against the fucking Tampa Bay Rays. No, you did not. David Price came in in relief and shut your ass down. That pussy. Look it up. That Look pussy. Look it up. Rookie David Price. Look that it pussy. up. How'd that chicken and French fries Red Sox team do? They underachieve? Yeah, but we're not going there. You okay. said no more. No, you, well, you said don't parse it. I'm just saying I can bring up some underachieving from the Red oh, Sox. Oh, cool. Past Two years later, no they won a fucking World Series. Cool. Uh, three years later, Brady won three World Series. Cool. Super Brady Bowl. plays. Brady plays baseball now. Six. Count them. Six. Bergeron one. All right. Bill's hangry. I don't know Getting if you got. I don't know if you have the difference. You are the Rain Man, but six and one. What's the difference there? 
five units of traction. Good job, Ray. Fuck it, Bill. Nice. Sully's up 23 and a half. Just let the record know I took the points. Uh, This has been the Summer Mind Social Hour, March 29th. Uh, See you on Friday. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Celtics are fucking rolling right now. Jolie is on you, Bill.